Well, what is up guys? So today we're going to stick with the whole drugs addiction theme and I'm going to tell you what it was like living as a heroin addict back in the 90s in Doncaster. Now if you've never been to Donny, there's a load of high-rise flats right in the town centre. Now back then in the 90s it was totally different to what it is now. We weren't overrun by immigrants, you know, you, like these days you can't get in the hospitals, you can't get in the doctors can't get nowhere to live back then it was totally different there weren't that many people around so all the flats were pretty much empty there'd probably be like a couple people living there but most of them were empty so what we used to do i'm not condoning this by the way i'm just telling my own experiences all the drug addicts would go just kick the doors off and go and move in and most of the time they'd just leave the electricity the water uh, the gas it'd all be left on so you, you had everything you needed. And right up at the top, there was a, a drug deal. I'm going to call him Mick. You know, I'm not going to use his real name. I think he's dead now, but you know, I don't want him coming back and haunting me. So I'm going to call him Mick. Uh, he lived at the top and he was a psycho. He was a right horrible cunt, proper bully, and he was just violent. And his deals were crap. But people scored off him because he was convenient. Now, you've got to remember, back then, there weren't no mobile phones. So in order to score some drugs, you had to ring a dealer. Well, first you had to find a phone. And then you had to hope that the vigilantes hadn't smashed it to bits. And then uh, you'd ring the dealer, and then you'd have to ring him back. And it was just a nightmare. So they scored off him because he was convenient. And he used to go up in the lift, score your drugs, and they used to come down the stairs and do the drugs on the hallway, out of the rain, whatever. But there was another guy who lived below, and he was an horrible cunt as well. And what he was doing, he was robbing people who'd like score off Mick, or call this guy Dave, and Dave used to wait for him in the hallway below. So they'd go up, score off him, come down the stairs, and he, Dave would be there waiting with a bat, give him a couple of digs, take all the drugs, and send them on the way. Now he never taxed me because I knew him pretty well, but he was taxing a lot of people. And Mick didn't even know he was there. So after a while, his, um, his uh, custom had gone down. He's like, I can't understand it. No one's scoring off me anymore. It's suddenly gone down. I don't know why. And one of the lads says, it's because of fucking Dave downstairs. Every time they score off you, they go down there and he robs them, beats them up. And straight away he pulled his machete out. He's like, oh, where is it? And he's gone charging down with his machete. But Dave wouldn't open the door. So what Mick's done, he's gone back up and he had these like decorative spears. What he had, they were proper spears and he used to have them, have them as de decorations. So he's gone up, he's grabbed one, he's gone charging down, banged on the door and lifted, it, it, um, Dave's lifted the letterbox up. Mick stabbed him through the face, through the letterbox. So I tell you, he didn't score again after, he didn't rob anyone again after that. But yeah, this guy was, he was a maniac. He could switch in an instant. And I remember once uh, he thought somebody had robbed some money or some drugs. And he said, I want, he said, I want to fucking kill him. And he told me who it was. And he says, listen, when he comes up here, he's getting it. He says, but don't you tell him if you see him, because if I find out you've told him, you're getting it. And I thought, well, I don't want no smoke. You know, I don't want to get stabbed. So I says, all right, then. And as I was leaving, I got down in the elevator, and boom, he was right there. And I thought, fuck. I thought I could tell him here, but if I do, then I'm going to get it. So, you know, I learned in prison, mind your own business, know what to do with me. So I just said, you're all right, and carried on walking, and it didn't sit well with me, you know. Um, my girlfriend at the time, I says, I said, oh, man, this don't feel right. But I couldn't do it, you know. And anyway, we hung back. I says, let's wait, see what happens. And about five minutes later, he's come down, and it, it was dark. And I'll never forget it. This is, like, burned into my memory. He was, like, wandering forward all dazed, and I like, didn't know where he was, and it was dark. He had his hood up and his face was white as hell. But I could see there was something wrong, you know, the something weren't right. And he was like stumbling forward like a walker from Walking Dead. And as he got closer, I could see there was something wrong with his face. And then when he got there, he'd been slashed with a Stanley knife. I don't know if you know how sharp they are, but they are lethal. 
and had slashed all his face, he looked like Pinhead from Hellraiser. And that image is burned into my brain. And this is what people don't understand about addicts, you know, when they get clean, they think you just go off into this great new life. They don't realize that they've got these thoughts, you know, these memories swimming around their head like old ghosts from the past. And, you know, I, I still have nightmares about it. I can still see it now, just like it was yesterday. And, um, yeah, I used to live in these flats. And I used to do a bit of drug dealing myself. I, no, I weren't big time or all like that. I was just, like, very low level. And my gimmick was, I'd say, look, you can come anytime you want, but you're not getting in. You know, you put your money through the letterbox, and then I'll give you the drugs. Because junkies are, you know, they they're always coming short, they're always trying to rob you. If you let them in, they'll just take out, they'll nick out, they'll, they'll take your eyes and then come back for the sockets. So, um, yeah, I did a bit of drug dealing. I was living with a prostitute at the time. And I tell you what, those prostitutes, I've always got love for prostitutes because it's a hard life. And I remember this last one I was living with. She used to get paid. You get, they get good money. And it's always surprised me the type of people that meet with prostitutes. You think it's all dirty old men, but it's not. And she had a couple of well-paid, well-respected doctors what used to pay her, like I think it was like £600, just for like an hour's threesome. And um, like I said, they were real well-respected doctors. And I remember she had, uh, she had one bloke, and he used to pay her something like, I think it was like £100, just for 20 minutes and she just had to kick him in nads or she had to sit on his chest and punch him in the face and, and he paid her to do that it's crazy but yeah that's what it was like living in the flats in Doncaster back in the days uh, if you like the video that's the video for today press the thumbs up subscribe to the channel and just before I go I just want to say I made a video the other day and um, I was talking about overcoming suicide and you know, when I was at my lowest point, when I tried to talk myself, I like to talk about that to show people that there's a way out. You know, you don't have to live like that. There is a better life. There is a way out. And I was going through the comments and someone said that I'd relapse. Someone says that I weren't looking my normal self. And, you know, I get, I get that because when I talk about this stuff, it was a very hard point in my life. So when I talk about it, I get emotional. It's hard for me to talk about that stuff. So that's why I might... You know, you might hear my voice crack or... Because I get emotional talking about it. But I feel it's important to talk about it. To show people that you can win. You know, you can come out the other side. So anyway, if you like the video, press the thumbs up. Um, bonjour de pap.